Hello my friends, Erica here today. I am coming to you with a book haul, so stay tuned. Look at these shelves, aren't they neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Wouldn't you think I'm the one, the one who has all the books on these shelves? Adventures are told. How many adventures can one shelf hold? Looking around, do you think? Sure, I've got all the books. Okay, so you know how they say things happen in threes? Well, it's been kind of a rough few days. <sighs> Something scary happened on Saturday. Luckily, he's alright, but I don't want to talk about it. And then, um, and then on Monday, we were in the Springs celebrating our 17th year wedding anniversary, and the car wouldn't start when we came out from GameStop. And it took us quite some time to to figure out what's going on with it and then yesterday when we finally 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 got home um it was snowing pretty bad and the steps were slick and I took a spill down the stairs I twisted my lower back and my hip so basically my lower back, my hip, and my right, my right hip, and my le right leg is just, it's freaking killing me. So, so there's that. So that's my life update. Anyway, that's why I haven't posted in a while, because I'm just, you know, life hits you sometimes pretty hard, and you gotta figure things out, but anyway... I have a lot of work to make up for because I clocked out early on Saturday because of the emergency that I had and then and then I called off on Tuesday so yeah isn't life grand it's grand but anyway as I promised I do have a book haul I um You're sitting on one of them. Okay, so I did end up going to the, uh, little free library that we have just around the corner. And, um, I got three books from there. You're probably going to laugh at one of them because you're like, Erica, you don't read that kind of thing. But, uh, my mom used to read the Amish books all the time. And this one is actually one of her favorites. So I thought I would give it a try since it was there. It's called The Shunning by Beverly Lewis. I know. Probably not going to be my cup of tea. But, hey, it's going to be with, you know. At least give it a shot. Give it a shot. Okay. Then, the next one I got was, If I Have a Wicked Stepmother, Where's My Prince? by Melissa Cantor. This one says, when Lucy Norton's father remarries and moves her from San Francisco to Long Island, Lucy finds herself living in a fairy tale in all the worst ways. Along with her wicked step monster and bratty stepsister, she suddenly has a basement bedroom and a list of chores a mile long. At least Cinderella got Prince Charming. When Connor Pearson, the dashing prince of Glen Lake High, notices her, Lucy's life begins to change and she finally starts looking forward to a happily ever after. But sometimes... The happy ending you get isn't always the one you expect. Lucy's about to discover the truth about finding her real Prince Charming and herself. So, it sounds decent. 
Then I also found one by Casey West, which I have never read a Casey West book. Um, so I figured I would, you know, she's pretty popular right now. So I figured I would give her a try. And this one is called The Fill-In Boyfriend. When Gia Montgomery's boyfriend, Bradley, dumps her in the parking lot of her high school prom... Oh, that's just wrong. You gonna break up with your girlfriend on prom night? That's almost as bad as breaking up with your girlfriend over the phone. Somebody did that to me. Um, she has to think fast. After all, she'd been telling her friends about him for months now. This was supposed to be the night she proved he existed. So when she sees a cute guy waiting to pick up his sister, she enlists his help. <clears throat> the task is simple. Be her fill-in boyfriend. Two hours, zero com commitment, a few white lies. After that, she can win back the real Bradley. The problem is that days after prom, it's not the real Bradley she's thinking about, but the stand-in. The one whose name she doesn't even know. But tracking him down doesn't mean they're done fake faking a relationship. Gia owes him a favor, and his sister intends to see that he collects. His girlfriend's graduation party. Three hours, zero commitment, a few white lies. Just when Gia begins to wonder if she could turn her fake boyfriend into a real one, Bradley comes waltzing back into her life, exposing her lie and threatening to destroy her friendships and her newfound relationship. So that sounds exciting. <clears throat> So then we went to books again, and I was literally the only one who got anything. <laughs> uh, so I got In the Kingdom of Myths by Jane Jakeman. By now, a celebrated artist, Monet returns to London in the early 1900s to paint his famous Thames, or is it Thames series? Whatever. His haunting paintings form the backdrop to a series of psychopathic killings that arouse fears of a return of Jack the Ripper. And that is why I've, I I wanted to pick it up, because it's about Jack the Ripper. And I you if you already know this, you should already know this, that I am obsessed with the stalking Jack the Ripper series, which I want to reread for sure. Oliver Craston, a fledgling diplomat by chance, is present when a horribly mutilated body is pulled from the Thames and becomes unwillingly drawn into the investigation. With the Foreign Office nervous over French sympathies with the Boers, Oliver has been detailed to keep close observation on the Monet family. Who are staying in the Savoy Hotel? But on the floor above the Monet's suite stalks a greater terror, and across the river in the back street slums of Lambeth are visions of horror beyond even the intuition of the artist. So that sounds really good. Sorry, I had somebody knocking on the door, and I don't like to answer the door. Anyway, I'm hoping they are they could go away. Then I got the inexplicable logic of my life. I am almost positive I already read this one, but I wanted to own it. So it's an LGBTQ plus book. Then I'm looking. Hang on a second. The first day of senior year, everything is about to change until this moment 
Sal has always been certain of his place with his adoptive gay father and their loving Mexican-American family, but now his own history unexpectedly haunts him, and life-altering events force him and his best friend, Samantha, to confront issues of faith, loss, and grief. Suddenly, Sal's throwing punches, questioning everything, and discovering that he no longer knows who he really is. But if Sal's not who he thought he was, who is he? At least I think I've read it. I'm not positive, though. Next, I got um, Kingdom of Bones by James Rollins. I'm not sure, but I, I wasn't sure if I own this one or not, but this one is in large print. So it'll be a lot more easy to read that way. And uh, so it's part of a series. So I can't really, well, they kind of read like standalones, honestly. But I still won't read the back of it anyway. But yeah, I love, I love large print. It's the best kind. The best kind. So it's 600 and... Six hundred and fifty nine pages. Okay, next is In the Dark by Brian Freeman. Yeah. And I found out when I got, this is another large print, I found out when I got the um, audio that it's the fourth book in the series. But it's okay. Um, it, it feels like it's going to be like a standalone anyway because each book has a different mystery, so it's fine. it's fine. Then last but certainly not least, I got this Boys Town um, series. There's nine books here. I'm not sure if that's all of them or not, but this is what they had. And it's... LGBTQ plus mystery. It's um by Ma Marshall Thornton. So the first one it has three Nick Nowak mysteries in it, and it says Finalist for the Lambda Award in Gay Mystery, Boys Town 3 Nick Nowak Mysteries, takes place in Chicago during the early 1980s. Haunted by his abrupt departure from the Chicago Police Department and the end of his relationship with librarian Daniel Liberty, Nick Nowak, Nowak is a beat cop turned dog private investigator in this first book of the series nick works through three cases a seemingly simple missing person search an arson investigation and a suicide that turns out to be anything but while working the cases nick moves through a series of casual relationships until he meets homicide detective bert harker and begins a tentative relationship so yeah I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, so yeah, that's my life day update. That's my haul. Um, hopefully I can get back into finishing Keeper of the Lost Cities as well. So I may be posting some chapters tomorrow. Today is the 28th. So yeah, anyway. I hope you liked this video. If you do, please give me a big thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, please click that subscribe button and click that little bell notification down below to be notified when I post. All of my links are down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Later. I've got romance and nonfiction, a many. I've got horror and dystopian galore. 
You want fantasy? I've got plenty. But who cares? No big deal. I want.